One of the most recognizable globalist entities is infiltrating Canada's cities. Under the 100 Resilient Cities banner, the Rockefeller Foundation is funding the salaries of a new bureaucrat in Toronto, Montreal, Calgary and Vancouver, known as the Chief Resilience Officer. This is the same Rockefeller Foundation that for the better part of a decade has been implementing and executing a well-funded and sophisticated campaign against the Canadian oil sands and against Canadian oil pipelines. And while I still don't quite understand what it means to be a resilient city, it certainly has all the cachet of a modern buzzword seeking to elicit a positive emotional response. But don't take it from me, here's the newly funded Rockefeller bureaucrat Katie McPherson explaining exactly what this position will entail. A big part of what my role is going to be, it will be uh, leading the development of a resilient strategy for the city. Our Greenest City Action Plan, Renewable City Strategy, um, a number of these all form, a, form a basis for resilience. Um, and so uh, what we hope to do through the resilience strategy, what we intend to do through the resilience strategy, is to really look holistically at all of these, um, assess where the, where the gaps may be, and, and leverage the resources and, and skills that will come from 100 resilient cities to address those gaps. Okay, a lot of buzzwords and a ton of virtue signaling there, but I'm not exactly sure we heard a single detail or plan to address any relevant issues facing Vancouver today. Maybe Mayor Robertson has a better idea? Our focus with our, our 100 Resilient Cities partnership is to really drill down on uh, where the weak links are, where we can be stronger as a city, and, and how we can uh, bridge the gaps we currently face. We think this uh, new Resilient Cities network really positions us better to make stronger partnerships with other cities and uh, different providers uh, to help us deal with uh, our gaps. Nope, just more buzzwords there too from the mayor. We heard Katie mention that her background is in crisis response. Well, Vancouver is months into a fentanyl crisis that isn't getting any better. What are her plans for that? Or how about the lack of affordable housing that has only been compounded with the policies of municipal governments like Vancouver? Well, when it came time for questions, I asked the new Chief Resilience Officer how her position plans to deal with the out-of-control rent and housing prices in Vancouver that are forcing so many who were born and raised here out of the city. In particular, what this new role brings is access to, um, as Jeb mentioned before, um, platform uh, partners uh, who bring um, free resources um, to our city that we can connect, uh, connect down um, to people on the ground who are already thinking about these issues of affordability. So they know it's a problem, but they need to consult more. But my favorite is that if they do come up with a plan, it will need to be in consultation with other member cities in this globalist network of resilience. The issue of affordability is sometimes exclusively blamed on wealthy Chinese who are buying up Vancouver real estate well above asking prices, but there is significant blame to be put at the feet of municipal governments like Mayor Robertson's. According to the Independent Contractors and Business Association of BC, the average housing unit sold faces around $28,000 in municipal regulations, and it's even higher in the city of Vancouver itself. The ICBA also has a graphic showing Vancouver is the slowest municipality in the region to see new residential developments approved, an average of 15 months. So I asked the mayor directly what he thought about these numbers and if the city could do anything to speed it up. Our economy has been booming for many years. We have people coming from all over the world, uh, people with money coming uh, to Vancouver and willing to buy land at higher prices. And that's put enormous stress. We, we have record levels of, uh, of approvals of new housing and buildings in Vancouver in the last several years now so we need to keep increasing the supply that's absolutely part of the solution we also need to address the the challenge we have uh, on the affordable end of the spectrum the market is not delivering affordable housing so the city the province and the federal government also need to make sure we're investing and intervening to ensure that there is more affordable housing being built a very diplomatic answer, as you might expect from Robertson. But I wouldn't think the mayor, who is obsessed with the idea that everything can become greener or more sustainable no matter the cost, would even bother acknowledging that building to those standards does mean higher costs pass on to the buyer. After the presser, though, I was able to ask a couple questions of the Rockefeller Foundation's Jeb Brugman that if the history of the foundation opposing the Canadian oil and gas industry would continue through these chief resilient officers in our four cities. It will be for the city uh, itself and of course the stakeholders that are giving input into the city about what their resilience priorities are to decide uh, whether the pipeline will be a main focus. Uh, but I would estimate that given that one of the major areas of risk that the city faces is in the port at the same time that it's 
the largest port in Canada and one of the major areas of economic activity in the city, that the port undoubtedly will become somehow a center of focus. I think Canadians in any of the four cities should be concerned that a globalist organization that has funded such strong opposition to our energy sector will have significant influence in city policies. I'd say get ready for even more emphasis on sustainability and interconnectedness or whatever buzzwords are hot this week, and get ready to see your cost of living go way up as a result. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Christopher Wilson. Thanks for watching. I need you to do a huge favor for me. Click subscribe on our brand new Rebel Canada YouTube channel. It has all the great reports you've been used to, but focusing exclusively on Canadian issues.